I'm just going to go ahead and tank the whole season. And it's not the NFL. It's not the worst record and you got the first pick. It's, you know, the top, you know, worst teams in the league all going to the lottery, and then you have the lottery, you know, and yeah, it's usually during all-star event weekend, you have the lottery, you see who's going to have, you know, the top pick in the draft, and yay, everybody's happy because, you know, the Clippers are picking, you know, number one in the draft this year, but they're still going to, you know, <laughs> not exceed expectations, or you're going you're to have, like, you know, stars like Blake Griffin get hurt, and you, you're going to have to wait till next year to see what they're going to do. It's, it's, it's sad that, you know, some people in entertainment, some people in sports, and some people, once they've been out of the limelight for too long, just really need um, something to get them back in. And, you know, here's the thing. John Lucas really hasn't done much lately. You know, he, I think he just wanted, you know, the attention that comes with, um, you know, the engine. Being, being an old coach and wanting to get back in the spotlight, you don't make accusations like that. Just say, okay, we threw in the season. Hey, guess what? You might have. You might have thrown in the season. Hey, no doubt. The Cleveland Cavaliers, you know, are more horrible, you know, at one point in time. <laughs> Anybody and everybody knows that. You know, if you're from Cleveland, uh, you know, here's the thing. I think, you know, and, and I, I can't bash them too much, but here's the thing. There's certain cities, and I'm going to watch how I say this, because here's the thing. Cleveland has some of the most loyal fans out there in the world. Some of the worst teams out there in the world, the most loyal fans. As Washington, D.C., you know what, just, you know, just, just take every team in Washington, D.C., and just dismantle them. Just, just tear them apart. Because, you know, there's just certain cities that just teams do not work out in. And, yeah, I mean, thank, thank God the Nationals spent some money this offseason. But just because you sign one pitcher you know, and you spent over $100 million on them doesn't mean you're actually going to do anything. Um, speaking of baseball, the Florida Marlins um, basically had the you know, baseball union come to them yesterday and say, hey, listen. You guys are breaking all these, you know, all these, you know, rules and everything else by not spending enough money. So the Marlins basically said, okay, we're going to spend more money. And we're going to upgrade our payroll. So the first thing that they do is they go out and sign Josh Johnson to a new four-year, thirty-nine million dollar contract. <laughs> I find this very interesting in, in, in a lot of aspects because up until this point. The Marlins were unable to, and I, I here's the thing, they weren't unable, they just didn't want to spend the money. Uh, it, even as, even as, you know, the last time we looked at it, even as last November, this past November, which is only a couple months away, you know, um, during the winter meeting, um, the Marlins and Josh Johnson's agents were basically at an impasse. You know, they didn't think the contract was going to get done. They were just, hey, Josh was just going to sign a one-year, you know, basically arbitration tender offer, and, and then he's going to move on, and, you know, he probably would have got traded, you know, next season. Um, Josh has come out in the media, you know, just saying, hey, listen, I'm just glad I know where I'm going to be at. This sets up my family for the rest of their lives. I'm very happy with the situation and where I'm going to be and what I'm going to be doing. And, you know, he even, you know, said that, you know, Jeffrey Loria, the, the owner of the Marlins, you know, kept telling him throughout the season, listen, don't worry about the contract. We're going to find a way to get it done. We're going to find a way to, you know, re-sign you and keep you here on the team. And now we all know that, you know, the Marlins have an extensive history, just like Pittsburgh Pirates, of developing talent and then basically turning them around and shipping them off. You know whether whether you're you know Dontrell Willis or you know uh, you know they're trying to ship off Dan Julia, but you know there's just so many Marlins players that have just come and gone, or you know they had the year where they bought everybody, including Jim Leland, to go in there and win a World Series. You know you know Livion Hernandez pitching, and 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 you know 
it's just one of those franchises that they want a new stadium that don't necessarily have, the, you know, the fans coming to the game. They, you know, they, 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 they won a World Series. You know, they got that going for them. But there's also been so much talk of relocation for them at the same time. Here's the thing. If you're going to be a competitive baseball team, either you need to seriously breed your, you know, I can't say breed your talent, but you need to seriously make sure that you're selecting the right talent in, in, the, in, in the major league, you know, draft. You need to make sure that you have the right instructors, the right coaches, and everything else. Make sure these kids are getting a proper fundamental training if you're going to be a small ball squad. Now, 